Namaskar. Hello and welcome to P Guru's channel. I'm your host Sri Ayer. This may be one of the most important hangouts that you will be hearing this year because a lot has happened in the shadow of the Olympic Games. Uh, for instance, the meeting between Vladimir Putin and Xi Jinping. About 25 heads of state are in uh, China right now, and and you can tell who are all the psychophants and who are all the ones who are probably admirers, whatever. So to know a little bit more about what transpired at this meeting, let's listen to our guest of the evening, Elmer Yuan. Elmer, Namaskar and welcome to P Guru's channel. How are you? How are you? Thank you for inviting me. The uh, most important happened at this Winter Olympic is really the meeting between Putin and Xi Jinping. The, uh, as we know, the world situation is uh, in terrible, uh, very, uh, very high tension. You have the West, you have the West Pacific, you have the Indian situation, the border situation, you have Ukraine, uh, uh, Ukraine, and then you have uh, uh, also Iran shooting in uh, Abu Dhabi, and all everything's happening. It's, it's really a chaos right now, and suddenly you have the most two most important person meet which is Putin and Xi Jinping. Uh, and they met, um, she, uh, Putin was supposed to go to the Winter Olympic for two days, 48 hours. It turned out to be nine hours, all right? They had an extensive meeting and including the little bit of uh, personal time, they had four hours of solid meeting. And I had a little bit of a working uh, dinner and Putin went back on the same day, altogether nine hours. And uh, before Putin showed up at the opening ceremony, they signed 15 agreement, business agreement. And the most important of all, of course, is the natural gas. That's the longest, like almost over 30 years. And uh, uh, the quantity and the, and the amount is uh, bigger than everything. So, but then why only nine hours? How come? They were supposed to be forming an alliance. That's what China wanted. And Putin has been hesitating not to form an alliance. So what really happened is from my information from Beijing, it was not good. It's a terrible meeting. And if you watch the, uh, we all watch the TV, they did not even shake hands. No handshaking. Right? When Putin goes up to meet with Xi Jinping, Xi Jinping basically turned a little bit and they never extended his hands out. Uh, and even though they don't even wear masks, so they, they already, they are probably all vaccinated, but no, no handshaking is very serious. And then they had a meeting for four hours, finish everything. From, uh, from what I heard, it's a huge contract. It's almost half a trillion dollars in, uh, in amount. And uh, uh, um, what really happened, China wanted to pay in RMB. Right? Because China's foreign reserve is dwindling, uh, they're losing. So they want to pay in RMB and hope the Russian will come back and uh, buy Chinese product or use Chinese infrastructure or using something. They want to break out. They want RMB to break out, and at least uh, in Russia or in their so-called uh, like Iran and their allies like uh, North Korea. They want to RMB become the foreign currency. That's what they want. And not try to replace, but at least as some kind of improvement. Sorry. Um, just for our viewers' clarification, RMB is a sign, a symbol for Renminbi, also called as Chinese Yuan. Please continue. Okay. RMB. So Renminbi is a soft currency. Today you give RMB, except Hong Kong, other than Hong Kong, you go anywhere else. People say, sorry, I can't accept it. Give me hard currency. It's a soft currency. So, and then they try so hard to break out, to make it a international currency because they saw how American can print money just like that. So they want to learn to do the same, which is obvious. But anyway, that was a big, very big problem. And according to the, you know, you can say rumors or what I hear from Beijing, Putin said, if you want me to accept RMB, you, I need some security. What if, what if suddenly the exchange rate, you know, collapse or RMB collapse and nobody wants it anymore? I need some security. And China asking, what security you want? 
He said, give me a piece of land you know, next to the ocean so I can have a warm seaport. This is one of the reasons. <laughs> of course, that thing blew up. You know, you, can you imagine? And Russia, Russia, they don't feel ashamed to ask. They have very thick skin. Seriously. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the reason she was very upset. And during the uh, opening ceremony, uh, Putin was, uh, uh, you know, dozing off, maybe pretend, huh, to doze off. Sit up huge sofa and he dozed off. They didn't sit together, and uh, there are many many signs. It was a big problem, so which means the um, Xi Jinping's wish of forming an alliance to counter USA is in trouble. But Xi Jinping had to make concession. You see, Russians are very very uh, what do you call blunt or very blunt. You don't sign the agreement, I'm not going to the opening ceremony. That's how they do. Two things. That's, that's the Russian way. All right. <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Two questions that come up. First is, did Putin first meet the Zhao Ziming's Zhaoming's uh, group before he met uh, Xi Jinping? Not this time. Not John, this time. Uh, John Ziming's group is based in Shanghai. Right? Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, this uh, this Olympic is held in Beijing. So every time we go to Shanghai, he must see John Ziming first because I that's see. his buddy. Gave him yeah. this huge piece of land equivalent to the whole Western Europe. Right? So, two, so two, two questions still. I'm yeah. sorry, you've given so many info, so much information that I must ask you some of these questions. One of the things is, so how did the deal go down finally? Was it land or was some other surety given? No, no surety. So it became euro. Finally, Xi Jinping, in order to get, get the Putin to join the opening ceremony, agreed to pay in euro. So the deal was in Europe. And then in the agreement, I don't know whether you've read it, it's a really most interesting point is about your country. They say everything they do has to take into consideration of Russia's agreement with India. You have some kind of treaty, right? Which right. I never really know, but that's yes, yes, yes. in the contract. And that is very, very insulting for China. What do you mean? Everything Russia and China do, you have to refer to the Indian uh, treaty? <laughs> and India right now is an enemy to PRC. So this is very, very insulting, right? Written in the joint declaration of this meeting. So it's really, uh, I mean, this is a huge loss of face. And then in the evening, of course, Xi Jinping has the biggest ceremony. But this is much, much smaller than in 2008 Eight, Olympic. Right. At that Olympic, almost about 130 countries top of state, head of state show up. This time, maybe 20 something. And most of them are not even head of state. Only the uh, Central Asia, those five countries, Putin came, but never really stayed long. So very, very, even North Korea, can you imagine? China give, donate to North Korea, at least maybe $2 billion a year. A year we donate to, 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 to North Korea. The, 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 the fat boy didn't even show up. <laughs> the fat boy can, didn't can show you up. Imagine, you know, <laughs> this is ridiculous. You know, this is a, so it's it's really a very terrible. You, know, you are going to hear after the this Olympic is finished. You are going to hear all kind of bad news because the communist Chinese or the Politburo people, those people never ski. You understand? I mean, you India because of the weather, you don't ski. But in the, those Politburo people never ski. They don't understand the ski culture. You know, ski is a very, very high end game. Right. You know, it's like golf, very much. Only the very privileged or wealthy people can afford it. And those people have influence. They have very big influence worldwide. They when they when they ski, you don't see the difference. But when these people they they live the best and they enjoy the best and they have rich friends, high level friends, they are being treated as a concentration camp. You're not allowed to visit Beijing city at all. Everything is it's like a quarantine. It's like quarantine. The whole system is a quarantine off from the rest of the country. So everything, it, lots of checking, everything you move from here to here, one check. And then the food. They thought the uh, ski ski athletes are the same as the normal Olympic athletes. It's a different food quality level, to be honest. Yes. You know, you go to this ski resort, you see what they eat, all right? They like this high-end wine and fondue and cheese and that kind of thing. Normal athletes don't eat so well. 
So the chat they and everything is decided by Xi Jinping, right? Because Xi Jinping wants to run his own show. They think the whole thing is sub substandard living, substandard eating, and the environment is really like a quarantined uh uh what your concentration camp. That is the word for it. It's going to come out after the show. And that the Xi Jinping's enemy is going to use it against him. You screw up the you screw up the Olympics, you screw the screw up, screw up the relationship not only with the American, but also with Russia. This is going to come out. So it's a terrible, it's really a uh, his enemies, his opponents are it will be will use this to attack him. It's a terrible thing. He should never have it held. And ecologically, it's horrible. There is no snow near Beijing for many years. I lived there for 10 years, all right? There is no snow. So everything has to be artificially created. So can you imagine how much water, the amount of water to make, to make snow? You need water and you need yes. electricity. So just because he wanted, he wanted to be held, right? This is his personal glory. Just in ecology, you have to generate so much electricity to to produce snow manually, and of course to cover not only the tracks but also the what you see. You like to see a little bit of snow on this hilltop and that there top, and it's terrible. You need a lot of snow, and what if it rains? What if it rains? That's very serious. So they are shooting up a lot of these weather cannons to try to stop the rain. Stop the cloud from forming so there's no rain because if the rain goes on the top of the snow <laughs> it will wash off the snow <laughs> immediately <laughs> melts because rain is warmer than snow right yes yes so yes, immediately yes. well so they are hoping in the in this 10 this 10 12 days there's no snow, no rain it's a disaster and then they're trying to save money oh maybe we put a little bit less but you know skiing you need very deep snow to be soft yes yes, yes it's like yes. a cushion the yes, minute if yes. it's underneath, it becomes ice. Overnight, it can become ice. Then you put snow on top. This is very dangerous. People yes. can fall on it and really uh, break, break bones. their bones, yeah. Yeah. break their joints. So it's not something, you know, this totally is unprofessional. Because China, I was in China. I mean, we were, we were trying to do a ski resort maybe about 20 years ago, all right? And we couldn't find any suitable place in China for a ski resort because it's either too cold or it's not, it's not enough snow. So Northern China is not suitable for, uh, for snow. It's not like the Alps or like the Rockies. It's not the same. So uh, uh, it's going to be, uh, uh, I, I, you're going to see every day it's already uh, bad news is showing up. So uh, now, but the end result politically, I want to say is now China finally is totally isolated. One question that uh, is again coming up from what you said. So there is a new gas supply agreement worth half a trillion dollars, mm -hmm. $500 billion between mm -hmm. Russia and China. Remember, we touched upon this in one of our previous conversations where yes. we said that the pipe coming through Siberia, it's too cold and therefore it is not possible to send. So has Russia found an alternate route to bring the natural gas and crude to China? Syria is not too cold. When they build the pipeline, the Russian, first of all, there's a lot of corruption going on in, in Russia, seriously, among the Putin's uh, cronies, right? So a lot of money was stolen. And also, when they Russia built pipeline to Western Europe, they had a lot of help from the Western countries. Yes. German, because, yeah. American, yeah. they were helping a lot. But yeah. right in the, in, the, in the Siberia, they have no help. And they hate that. Engineers don't want to go there. There's no life in Siberia, no life at all. So when they build the pipeline, the welding, the welding was poorly done. Between each pipe, you need to weld, very well weld. And the pressure is so high, it's 12 mega par. Par means atmosphere. So it's under such pressure. So they couldn't stand the pressure. So they were building the two pipes 3,000 kilometers. And the, the, the original plan for putting is one pipe goes to China, the other pipe will supply to Japan and Korea. So he has, we will have two customers, will not have be, will not be uh, controlled by China as, as a single customer. So that was the scheme. 
So instead of go straight 1,000 kilometers, straight down from Siberia, down straight into China, he went up and then go and then went uh, east. So hoping that one pipe will serve Japan and Korea and then even uh, south, uh, Southeast China, south, Southeast Asia. But the point is, it was very poorly over budget, delayed and bad quality. So my friends in Russia told me they would never make money, which means it's not even viable. So they are trying to put up the pressure a little bit. Little. So right, right now, the contract they signed is, uh, I think, 30 billion, uh, 30 billion uh, cubic meters. Uh, mm. and, uh, and that is about half the capacity of those two pipes. So mm. they are going to run at half the pressure, basically. And uh, uh, it's not that much more. They, in fact, China could have used more. You remember Xi Jinping promised in the uh, Paris, uh, Paris uh, summit, uh, you know, uh, climate, that uh, they are going to reduce the emission and then so on. And he closed, shut down a lot of coal mine. Yes. So he, was, he really meant to reach that. But unfortunately, the Russian never supplied enough natural gas. As a result, a lot of power shut down. The power shut down, so so that's why you know, blacked out. You know, less than a month ago, so it's been going on, and ho uh, Putin hopes to make it up, but I still have much doubt. My my Russian uh, inside information told me that these these two pipes are disastrous. That's why I was working on another project to go straight down through Lake uh, through uh, Lake Baikal and then through Mongolia straight down to China. It's a little over a thousand kilometer which is better. But then now I'm become an activist. I'm not involved in any business. Seriously, it was a very good project. Much uh, shorter. Oh, yeah, just one second, Elmer. Uh, I'm just asking my editor to try and see if he can pull up a map of Russia and China. Fine. So that no, no, <laughs> no hangout with Elmer is complete without having at least one disturbance from you know who, Uncle Xi. <laughs> Here we go. So we have the maps up here. Uh, can you please uh, go in a little bit, zoom a little bit more, please? Because we can see the Mongolia, we can see China, and we can see Russia. We are trying to, uh, uh, we need a thing with all the city names and stuff like that. So uh, while you bring it up, let's, uh, you while you bring that up, let's talk to continue. So uh, I, I, I just wanted to ask you a couple of questions based on what you said. You said that uh, power had to be conserved. I mean, I mean, they had to refire the coal plant. And for that, Indonesia is not willing. Australia is not willing. So where are they going to get the coal from for that part? The, uh, now they are reopening those uh, so-called bad or dangerous or high sulfide coal mine. They've op opened up already. So now they're going to burn coal, which means China pollutes. Trust me, they say 30 40%. More than half of the world's CO2 come from China. India, you need to watch out because you are industrialized. But China is doing the worst because they are doing cement, glass, and then steel. Those need so much energy and then give out so much CO2. You are not, you are only a small part of them in, in comparison. So they are the biggest polluter in the world. So the Australian coal, they were giving China pretty high quality coal. The Chinese already use up their use their coal for for steel, making steel, not for generating power. But the uh, Australian coal they were using in southern China, they are fairly highly quality, but not up to uh, cooking coal. Cooking coal is for steel produce production. So, but then because of that, it caused the whole inflation of a uh, coal price. This whole Australian thing that they refuse to take has touched off and suddenly they realize their own coal does not have the calorie calorie for to produce enough heat for right, 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 right. so they went back to buy from Australia now indirectly indirectly right and Ch in fact China owns several big uh, uh, coal mines, mines. Yeah, in, in, Australia. In, in Australia there one of them you can look up YAN Yang coal they have a very big uh, coal mine but then you know you know, in politics, anything can happen. So it's it's they they will go back to uh, they will go back to uh, a lot of coal and hoping again hoping for for Russian natural gas. 
All right, uh, we're going to try and see if we can bring up a map again. Uh, this time we are bringing up, here you go. Thank you so much, this is wonderful. So now you can perhaps trace the China-Russia border expedition. Uh, maybe, can you pan it towards the right? Because we Can want you to go a little bit more north for the map? More north. A little bit. Yeah, you have to lower north. it a little bit. Yeah. But anyway, you see the word Russia. You yeah, see that yeah. word Russia, maybe somewhere a little bit south of the word R, the word R. That's where the lake, that's where the lake. So okay. the, 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 um, uh, the, the gas field is right north of the, it's where the R is, more or less where the R is, is where the uh, natural gas. This is the biggest, it's called Covita, very, very big, biggest in the world probably. So what happened is they built uh, two pipelines, a pair of pipelines, going up north, all right? Going up north and then come down, going up northeast and then come down all the way to, um, to, uh, to, oh, yeah. uh, let me see, yeah, you know, H E I T H E, all right? That word means Black River, means uh, uh, Heilongjiang. That's hmm. Heilongjiang. So they made a huge round to north and then come back down and then to meet the Chinese pipeline right there near Heihe. Uh, right right around that okay so so what happened is they hope one pipe will go to go to the pacific coast to supply to japan and korea and then one pipe will go to china but both were failure so uh can you move the map a little bit so we can see Mongo mongolia the original plan can you zoom out china, please can you zoom yeah. out yeah there you okay. go China original proposed to them that the R, you see where the R is? You go yes. straight southwest to Manchuli. You see the word Man, Man yeah, 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 yeah. Manchuli. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Down, down south. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the right, border, sir. that's the town of three countries, Mongolia, Russia, and China. The original China, China proposal, why don't you make a pipe, just go straight down into this Manchuri, and then we'll meet you there. But unfortunately, Putin has a bigger plan. He does not want to be controlled by China only. He wants to supply half of his gas to uh, Japan and not to, to Korea. So that they abandoned that plan. Right? So that plan didn't happen. So right now, they're still about using... An, if you, uh, if you can uh, Google, uh, power, it's called the Power of Siberia, those two pipeline. The name mm. is called Power of Siberia, very famous. It's all it's all over Google. So right now they have a problem, and uh, I don't think there's enough time to build another one. It takes at least with the Russian efficiency, it takes five years. With the American efficiency, maybe uh, maybe uh, yeah, maybe two years. Let me see. So so you got the exact map as it stands now. Yes yes. Can you enlarge it a little bit? Can you can you zoom in a little bit, please? Yeah, I think this is all we are going to get, uh, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah. You, you you see the word the K, K, uh, yeah. Kosnovsky. That's where the gas is. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So it's it's going the dot 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 goes yes, all the way. Yes. Kovita, you see Kovita there. So it right, goes right. north and then comes down. Yes. You see the arrow. That's where yes. it enters China. Right, 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 and right. And you see right. the little white under. Ko Kovirsky, that's the Baker, Lake, Lake Baikal. Yes, yes, yes. Lake, Lake Baikal, you see the little white? So right. you see they went up and then down. Yes. And then to yes. China. It's a disaster. Right. Very, right. very cold. Wow. <laughs> and we, we proposed they go straight down, but they didn't listen to us. Hmm. We proposed they go through Mongolia and straight into Beijing. Right. Which is, right. you know, right. just go south. Of course, of course. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So you see All the right. dots, you understand everything. The black, yes, yes. I think that the black dot, uh, that's that's where the pipeline is. Yes, yes. And you yes. see the extension to to the to the east. They want to go from Vladivostok to Japan. Correct, 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 correct. Right, 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 right. Wonderful. Um, let's. Uh, okay, so we can we can go back to normal uh, stuff. And uh, yeah, thank you. Um, the one lingering question from our previous hangouts was, what is the state of that nuclear plant, nuclear power plant? It was built with French technology, but the Americans were not allowing any repairs there. 
Uh, how do things stand now there? I think it's working at less than 50% capacity. I see. Because it's a damaged rod. The, the rod, the coating is damaged and they haven't repaired it yet. This kind of thing takes a long time because right. they, they need to get the French approval, the American approval. The American have to supply the technology to repair their rod, nuclear rod. And of course, now America are not so cooperative. And uh, they just blacklisted another 30 some country because they have a uh, they were involved in making weapon for China. So they, they are going to announce uh, probably tomorrow that no, not 30, 300 companies. They are going to ban another 300 company to use American technology. It's very serious. Th this thing is already on autopilot, the so-called collision course between China and the United States. And I don't, I personally don't believe there's going to be a Russia will be so crazy to invade Ukra Ukraine because they will lose all their money, income, gas, natural gas income from Europe, mainly, of course, Germany, because uh, Germany cannot stop American for cutting them off. So I don't, I don't believe he's going to, he's, but he's going to make the threat. This is interesting. He's going to take, make the threat. He said, no, you, your, your military cannot go into Ukraine. Sorry, you want to ask a question? Yeah, Elmer, I, actually, I wanted to tell my request, my editor, can you go to Amazon and look up Red Handed, R-E-D-H-A-N-D-E-D. -E -E it's the name of a new book. Yeah. Can you bring it up? I want to talk about that. A few questions for Elmer. But Elmer, please continue. I just wanted the editor to get that going. I, I have I have done two programs on that book in <laughs> Cantonese last week. All right. <laughs> One is about the Biden families. Yes. And the other one is the U.S. Congress. How would yes. they were totally bought red-handed, meaning yes. with evidence. All right. right. We always talk right. about right. no evidence. Plenty of evidence. Right. That book, that is the right. bestseller right now. Yes. The uh, red-handed is yes. the bestseller right now in the United States. How the, yes. how the Biden family, uh, how much they took. Of course, they, they took far more, but with evidence, it's about 30 some million US dollars. Yes, yes. And then all the congressmen. I, are you reading it? I, 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 we, are re we are reading it. I have just a couple of things for our viewers. Viewers, only the ebook is available. The hard copy is out of print already. Mm. And this third, this is the third source now that is confirming what Elmer has been saying all along. Shame on you guys who write conspiracy theories that Elmer and I put out. Elmer, I have a lot of Chinese sounding names, nothing against China or Chinese people, wonderful people, but comments, I cannot tell whether it is a real name or a fake name. All of them dissing you, always saying Elmer is this, Elmer is that, you know, wait a minute, this is a totally independent source and they have given data. So I'm going to ask four names. All four are connected with Hunter Biden and Joe Biden. You, <laughs> you mean tell your, me your, Cal theory. your California politicians? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now at least yours, you should read my book, Who Painted My State Purple? Because it is another fictionalization of what has happened here. I have no idea who Peter Schweizer is. I didn't even know <laughs> Elmer that well when I wrote the book. In fact, the first time I met Elmer is when I gave him the book, which means the research was done prior to me meeting Elmer. Mm. So, so th there, there is a lot of stuff that we have found out. First question, first person, She Feng, C H E F E N G. This guy is one of the guys who is connected with the security apparatus in China, and he and Henry Zhao, Henry Zhao, Z H A O, they helped Hunter Biden the twenty-five million dollars. Can you can you add a little bit more on these two individuals? No, Siri, you have to tell. We have to talk about the American politicians because these these guys' names don't mean a thing. They don't use their real name when they come to the United States. You understand? Of course, they of are course. Always under some, but these are very experienced spies, and then they invest a lot. They control. To be honest with you, let me tell you, you can you uh, they're going to sue me. All the big tech. Who are the biggest shareholder? It's really China money. And they even have sent directors sitting on the board. It's a very, very serious situation. But at least in the book, I mean, uh, Pelosi, of course, Feinstein, you understand, Peter Swivel, right? 
Yes, and yes. This is getting ridiculous. And uh, they are doing openly. They are doing openly. And one of the politicians even named himself as the representative of China. Right. He, you know, he is you know, he, openly, you know, meaning that you are an agent. He's an American. And um, this is such a scandal. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really sorry for the whole U.S. Uh, situation. And uh, it's, it's getting a little better nowadays. At least we can talk about it. So, so I, I'm, I'm just curious how far Biden is going to go with sanctioning China when Xi Jinping is going to get that one phone call. You want me to really tell the American people what you did, you naughty boy? So... It, it, it's going to be interesting how, how much farther he's going to go. But I don't know if the rest of the top heads, Nancy Pelosi, uh, Mitch McConnell, you know, <laughs> you know, where do I start? That's what I say. I mean, I'm reading this book red handed now and I'm like, every page is a new revelation. It's just incredible. So uh, reserve the next Tuesday talk for red handed because i'll have a little bit more uh, you know dip, uh, you know more in depth questions for you uh, um, elmer so let's do that next week red handed viewers do get this book ebook on ebook and you read it and you can ask some good questions so that we can actually make this thing a more informative uh, a, a more informative session now no, no, you no, mentioned no. Siri, Siri, i'm going to introduce to you my partner sasha we do yes. talk show every morning all right she yes. lives in Washington. She's been a news reporter for more sure. than 20 years, living in D.C. Okay. And she knows every per per person. Per body. She knows Wonderful. every one of them, even Peter Stryver, the, the author. All right? Yes, so yes. I'm going to get her to your show. Tell me Awesome. Why. And then you talk awesome. to her directly. Her English is excellent. She's a Harvard PhD and, uh, and, uh, and from Beijing University. She knows China more than me do. More Thank you so much. Thank you so mm -hmm. much. That's a great, great uh, offer and gesture. So please, uh, uh, you know, text me what that uh, detail is. Last thing, you you touched upon something that's a sore thing in my heart. Eric Swalwell. This guy is a congressman from San Ramon, which is a city just 20, 30, 40 miles north of where I live. This rascal, I have to use that word because he has been caught red-handed with a Chinese spy called Fan Fan, F A N. Christine F -A -N. Fong. Her, her, her American name is Christine Fan. Christine Fan, that's correct. So, um, <laughs> and the, instead of you know jailing this guy, Nancy Pelosi has put him in Foreign Policy Committee now. And and where does this thing stop? And and I'm telling you, viewers, intelligence. Wants, he is a member of the intelligence committee in, in the, the Congress. Committee now. Yes, 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 yes. And 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 I'm I'm telling you, every third person that I street, uh, meet in the street in San Ramon Bay Area is a master, is a PhD, is an intellectual. They think they're all special. How come you did such a dumb thing by voting this guy? And and I can tell you, even Bay Area is so solidly democratic. Even if I tell fact after fact after fact after after fact, they'll nod their heads and then they'll go back to vote for the same Democratic candidate. Guys, wake up and smell the coffee. Anyway, this is just my rant because I'm so disappointed with the way we uh, vote. Serious. So, in in conclusion, um, let's let's. So, so you think that a lot of revelations are going to happen after the Olympics finish. Second thing is that there is going to be no invasion of Ukraine. I put out a video yesterday saying that it's, there's going to be no invasion of Ukraine and mm -hmm. I'm being proved right if that happens. So mm -hmm. in conclusion, if you could wrap up this conversation for us, then we can uh, call it a go. So uh, I, I don't see much happening in, uh, in the Indian-China border either. There's not much. I think uh, what ha what's going to happen between now and October, the uh, enemy of Xi Jinping, is going to be on the offensive and keep attacking him, make sure he does not get re-elected for another five years because it's been disastrous. Even for these corrupted officials, they cannot steal money anymore. <laughs> he, pissed <laughs> off, he pissed away so much money, you cannot imagine. You know, even uh, Argentina came, right? Argentina president came, gave him something like a, two, uh, uh, $25 billion, all right? For gift, for gift the debt. Everybody gets paid, and uh, and and uh, and uh, Russia not only gets business, but they also get paid for showing up. So why 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 Argentina? Xi Jinping told her, Argentina president, 
you should go and get back to Falkland Island. <laughs> you know, this is what this guy is doing. <laughs> so basically, he is starting trouble, starting fire every every day. This is public, you know, I'm not, I don't make it up, you can see on the news. So it's terrible. Everybody come and get paid. It's so ridiculous. Ecuador, uh, Ecuador, yeah, in uh, South America. Uh, yeah. Forgive him for maybe like a, like a, a hundred billion dollars. Uh, it's just, uh, it's, they, he still have something left over money, you know, he's giving, giving away. Oh, forgive that. Forgive that as an e-cash. And, and viewers, this is my book, Who Painted My State Purple. This was written and finished in May of last year. And I've been slow marketing it mainly because I wanted to make sure that I have enough time to edit and get it right. So, uh, Elmer, thank you so much. And viewers, tomorrow we're going to have a conversation with Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar on the China-Pakistan part of the conversation that took place. Very interesting developments coming out from there also. And do support us join and help us grow this channel do like share and subscribe to our channel and click on the uh, bell button and by the way i will get sasha in our program i request you to give us the same kind of support she is very articulate i've heard her in in previous mm -hmm. instances and thank you once again elmer for offering to uh, you know get her on our channel and who knows where this is going to go wonderful talk today thank you very much and namaskar thank you thank you thank you for inviting